The Alliance of Small Island States, or AOSS, is a negotiating coalition of 44 members, made up of small island and low-lying coastal countries. Although they differ vastly, AOSS members share common vulnerabilities to climate change, the issues that has brought them together. The AOSS countries recognise these common physical and structural development challenges that include small territories, small population sizes, fragile environments and a vulnerability to natural disasters, which individually and collectively the ASIS countries comprise of less than 1% of the world's territory, population, GDP and greenhouse gas emissions. While they are unable to reduce emissions on a meaningful scale, AOSS members hence depend on other largest countries for both mitigation and adaption. Therefore, island states have a vital stake in the international effort to combat climate change. AOSS began in the late 1980s. Small island developing states realised the imminent dangers of climate change. It became apparent for these island states that the international response to climate change could not be managed by negotiating and campaigning in the international forums individually. This led to the creation of AOSIS in 1990 at the Second World Climate Conference. AOSIS functions as an ad hoc lobby group as well as a united negotiating voice for small island developing states within the United Nations system, especially the UNFCCC. In the development of the UNFCCC, AOSIS played a key role as one of the few developing country groups to actively participate. Participate. During negotiations, AOSIS set itself three goals. Firstly, to devise a common negotiating position. Secondly, to focus the world's attention on the threat of global warming and how it impacts small island states. And thirdly, to consider strategies to cope with the damaging effects of global climate change and to ensure that AOSIS interests were properly addressed. AOSIS set about 12 negotiating objectives to be included in the convention of which 10 of the 12 would become incorporated into the final draft of the convention. The AOSS coalition became an influential player in the UNFCCC throughout Ben's old notes as borrowed power, that is, drawing power from external sources. He notes four interrelated strategies used in negotiation, which are context-based, target-based, third-party-based and process-based strategies. These strategies were all used in UNFCCC negotiations to achieve goals as well as abiding by the common but differentiated responsibilities principle. Context-based strategies consist of AOSS members playing on their vulnerabilities by presenting themselves as innocent victims of the actions of others for moral negotiating leverage. This persistent pressure was central to the AOSS influence in giving a moral dimension to the negotiation process. Target-based strategies consist of emphasising the higher cost of inaction as well as promoting the fact that a healthier climate is in everyone's interest. Noting that ISS interests are in everyone's interest due to the fact that climate change is impacting island states first. Third-party-based strategies consist of strong reliance on the scientific evidence produced by the IPCC as well as support received from NGOs. NGOs provide not only technical information but also legal advice and capabilities, without which AOSS would not have been able to establish itself as a serious negotiating partner. This has also allowed small island states to participate on par with much larger and better resourced states. Over the years, AOSS has been one of the most vocal participants in negotiations within the UNFCCC, and is now widely recognised as one of the key players in the climate change regime for the successful negotiations in particular issues. Process-based strategies is helped by the support of NGOs, which taught AOSIS members to use the UNF's C process to their advantage. This meant organising all the island states into a tight negotiating coalition, which actively participated in negotiations, as well as early submissions to gain first mover advantage and to help ensure that issues important to AOSIS were part of the discussion. Through these strategies, AOSIS successfully played an important role in the climate regime as well as in the 1997 Kyoto Protocol, by highlighting the strong exposure to the changing conditions as well as the negative effects of climate change for all countries worldwide. This helped forge coalitions with more powerful groups of countries, especially the EU, and more progressive countries within the G77. While at times, AOSIS has successfully negotiated with other negotiating groups, it has, however, become more difficult over the duration of the UNFCCC as increasing numbers of issues have been added to the ever-expanding climate change agenda. 
Diverging interests in the areas such as differences in responsibilities between AOSIS, a major meeting developed and developing countries has grown over the duration of the UNFCCC. AOSIS believes strongly in the common but differentiated responsibilities, which has challenged powerful members of the G77 on respective capabilities for countries to act, while also calling for more ambitious action on mitigation. ASS has always had a difficulty developing a common position due to different types of environmental problems, such as different degrees of remoteness and vulnerability to external forces, different amounts of natural and human resources, as well as different amounts of regional perspectives and cultural attitudes. This is highlighted by the varied priorities in different regional groups of AOSIS, which has resulted in a lack of precise agendas as well as climate regulations affecting AOSIS members differently. Over the duration of the UNFCCC, these divergences have become more noticeable, especially in the past 5 to 10 years. This is due to a change in the importance of particular agendas in AOSIS and an increased number of individual submissions to UNFCCC. There has been a clear downward trend in the number of group submissions between 2006 and 2011 compared to early years. This is due to an increased number of issues. While many individual submissions have reinforced what has already been proposed in group submissions, they have sometimes also provided detail on specific issues. Some have, however, shown the divide between AOSIS in issues such as land use. Disagreements show the two-level game between AOSIS members who disagree over the land use and forestry issues. Although certain members have submitted interest, as a group, very few have been submitted regarding land use and forestry. Currently, the ASS group is still frustrated by the lack of action in creating a binding treaty to prevent global greenhouse gas emissions exceeding 2 degrees over pre-industrial levels. They are hoping a treaty will be in effect by 2017, and their frustration is conveyed through the, their efforts for trying to improve the efficiency in the UNFCCC process.